It's the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. Welcome to another episode of the Mike Prince Show. It is our mission to try to bring you some news you could use. Today is no exception to that rule. You can follow me on Twitter at the Mike Prince Show. The YouTube channel is the Open Mic Broadcast Network. And just in case you have one of those smart devices, all you have to do is say, hey, play the latest episode of the Mike Prince Show. And for those of you who follow us on the website, you'll know by now that we have a 24-hour stream for your listening pleasure. Be sure to check it out on the website at obnradio.com. With all that being established, let's jump right into today's episode. Well, the breaking news on yesterday was that Tennessee State made the announcement that they will be jumping in the ice rink and introduce hockey on an HBCU level. And this brought about a great buzz throughout the country, and deservedly so. But when you look a little bit deeper into this, it is not going to be jumping right into the world of ice hockey totally. Now let me explain what I'm talking about. The announcement talked about coming to life in 2024. And the big to-do behind all of this was the involvement of the NHL, the Nashville Predators, by way of Tennessee. So they're going to be carrying the financial load to get this project off the ground. Now here is where the rubber truly meets the road. This is going to be a club sport. Now, when we hear the word club sport or intramural sports, it will be taken seriously. There will be some very stiff competitive action going on. And for the most part, there is going to be some talent that show up. But this is going to be more of an experiment by way of the NHL introducing hockey, trying to broaden its reach. They have been on a very serious campaign to be more inclusive and particularly for the African-American community. And I'm all for that. I grew up on hockey in St. Louis, big St. Louis Blues fan. A lot of people of the African-American descent somewhat get it, but not really interested in it. And if I were to summarize what ice hockey is, it's basically football on ice, a very physical game, a very fast-paced game. And if you give it a chance, it could be a very, very great addition. But the question is, how much of a buy-in would other HBCU institutions take interest in the sport ice hockey? Now, when we look at the regions of ice hockey, it is a northern sport mostly. And when we look at the HBCUs, they are southern involved institutions. So, when I say Southern, not Southern University, but South, let me just clarify that. So, when we get to looking at the big picture of things, it's more of a regional interest than something that would possibly go nationwide, but that's why they're doing this experiment. Now, when you look a little bit deeper, and we'll bring it back home to Prairie View, did you know that Prairie View competes in men and women's rugby? Did you know that Prairie View compete in men and women's volleyball? Prairie View also competes men and women tennis. They also compete in men and women's volleyball, powerlifting. Oh, they also compete in video gaming. These are club sports, intramural sports. These are coaches that could be fellow students. These teams are backed by the certain departments on campus to rally their interest and keep students active during their campus days. So it is something that is very well taken seriously. In fact, some would even say more competitive than the teams that are lined up through the NCAA. So to see where this project will end with Tennessee State is going to be very interesting and intriguing. 
And could this be something that does catch wave throughout other HBCUs, in particular that of the Southwestern Athletic Conference? Time will tell. Meanwhile, we'll keep you focused, keep you in tune on the developments at Tennessee State and beyond as the games move forward. And speaking of moving forward, we're ever so closer to July 25th, SWAG Media Day from Birmingham, Alabama. Going to be some very interesting conversation going on. There's going to be a lot of looking over the shoulders and the school that's jumping off the map, at least for me, is JSU, the I love. We know life after Dion will continue to move forward, and we're going to see how JSU comes out the gate swinging with this 2023 campaign. A lot of eyes are going to be on them, and for historical purposes, JSU kind of likes it that way. They like to be the focal point of people's attention because that's just JSU, and there's no knock against that. So uh, it'd be very interesting to see how Coach T.C. Taylor and the Tigers move forward with life beyond the odd. And we got to ever be so mindful of what's going to be happening at Texas Southern. Coach McKinney has quietly been building a solid program. He has the quarterback who's coming to his own, and you're going to be seeing exactly how the rubber's going to meet the road for the Texas Southern Tigers. Of course, they'll start off their campaign against my beloved Prairie View A&M University Panthers. And the Panthers, if I'm not mistaken, will be going for nine consecutive wins. And that's always good. And it's a nervous point at the same time because you figure sooner or later something may give. But until that happens, keep on riding that purple and gold wave. And speaking of waves, Coach Connell Maynard has ruffled some feathers by way of Huntsville, Alabama, in his regards to the transfer portal. Not a big fan of it, but then some would call him to the carpet and saying that he's being very hypocritical. The stance that Coach Maynard was making was that now that this portal is so free and flowing, that it makes FCS programs nothing more than glorified JUCOs. And it needs to be a stop to this. Well, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Yes, people have the ability and the freedom to come and go as they please. And because of that, because of that, it opens up the floodgates even more which is why they're going to be introducing in 2024 a new rule from the NCAA that once a person commits to a transfer portal or a new team, they're going to have to sign a national letter of intent. And allegedly, once this letter is signed, they will have to cease all pursuing of that said athlete. We'll see how that works out. But meanwhile, Coach Maynard saying that it's making the FCS look like glorified JUCOs. But the same people you meet coming up will be the same people you meet coming down. It can't be hip hip parade when you're able to pull FBS players to the FCS and then kicking rocks when the roles are reversed, even if it's a lateral move, it's called competition. It's called fair market. And if a person feels that they can get a better deal over here or over there, then that's the way the cookie crumbles. But of course, we'll keep you posted. Coach Maynard has never been ashamed of expressing how he feels about any given situation. And that's what we love about him and all the other coaches that make up the Southwestern Athletic Conference. As we mentioned the other day, do not put handcuffs on our coaches' personalities. Let them speak, let them flow, and let them be able to let the rest of the world know 
how they really feel. Because if we talk about being hypocrites, don't say one thing because the mic is open or the cameras are lit up. If that's how you feel, say it from your chest. And with that being said, I've got to exit stage left for right now. I want to remind you guys to mark your calendars for September 1st, 2023. It'll be the start of our annual listening partner campaign drive. And we're asking those who could between September 1st and September 30th to make your annual commitment or start a new commitment by becoming a listening partner with a $60 donation or commit to a $5 a month support to help the operational movement and growth of the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter at The Mike Prince Show. The YouTube channel is the Open Mic Broadcast Network. And you can subscribe by clicking that bell notification and never miss the latest episode. With all that being said... I've got the exit stage left. So until the next time, I am the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. You guys be blessed, and we'll see you on the other side.